I don't know if you guys are familiar with the quartering. Okay, the quartering is a YouTuber, and he's this kind of guy who is regularly accused of being bigoted transphobic, racist, okay, like people say this a lot, but whenever you talk to some of his followers and you talk to people who support him, who are fans of the quartering, they're like, well, where, where's the evidence? Where did he say something that is bigoted? Where did he say something that, that would classify him as a, a white nationalist or something, right? Where, where's the evidence? And indeed, it's true. Some of the stuff is not easy to find because it is buried deep within, you know, subreddits. So not only is there like a subreddit that's called the quartering is a Nazi, right? You see it here. Um, it's got close to uh, 7,000 members, okay? So, oh, actually close to 8,000 members at this point. So 8,000 members being on the subreddit. And this subreddit is doing nothing except exposing him. There's also a whole Twitter account called quartering gaffs, okay? Which does the same thing. Uh, it's very much aligned with this, the Quartering is a Nazi uh, subreddit where people post it. So a lot of the posts on this one and on the Quartering is a Nazi is their overlap, right? It, it's it's very similar content um, on both of those. But there's a whole army of people. I mean, this one has like over 9,000 followers now. Uh, a whole army of people who do nothing but expose him for the bigoted views that he expresses publicly. So luckily, we had a very hardworking Reddit user, which is uxtremefee503. Okay, who put together a whole list or a compilation of Jeremy, that's his name, right? Uh, Jeremy um, Hambly, I believe is his name, of the quartering, of his biggest mask of moments. And I want to fly through these with you guys because some of them are absolutely insane. But before we get into this, I want to read this little disclaimer here because I think it's important. It does put some context to what's going on. So it says, I'm going to put together an auto-mod response for when people come in here asking why Jeremy is so bad or where's the proof that he's done any bad things. Granted, the majority of these comments are in bad faith and it will still increase visibility on the reality of who Jeremy really is since a lot of these moments are buried in the subreddit and difficult to search. Here's a list of a prior response someone else made in this sub when asked for proof. So this is already built on a list of prior responses. Part of it are these tweets. Um, and, you know, I'm going to link this post in the subreddit myself so you can go check them out yourself. I'm not going to go through all these tweets, right, because there's a whole collection um, of tweets that he put forward, including one of those uh, where he referenced the Daily Stormer. And this was on a Twitter account that he still had that is now deleted for obvious reasons, okay? And obviously the Daily Stormer is like a far-right neo-Nazi a website, a misogynist, white supremacist website. So he did all these things, but I'm not going to go through all these uh, these tweets uh, like this one where someone says F Hitler and he's like, and here we have it. Yikes, guys, yikes. Okay, F Hitler, how can you say something like this? But instead, what I want to do is I want to go through the actual video clips, okay? Because there are video clips of him where he actually says stuff that in my mind is completely unacceptable and just really dumb and exactly ticks the boxes of what he's being accused of. But let's get let's get through them, okay? Here's the first one. Terrible human. Wisconsin has how many black people? Are you kidding me? Have you heard of Milwaukee? It's like the third most dangerous city in the country. So he, he's basically he's basically like saying, well, black people dangerous. Right? That black people, have you heard of Milwaukee? Lots of black people, that's a dangerous area. You get this so often from like far right uh, you know, commentators and agitators who are like, well, look at the crime statistics. Black people are criminal. And it's like, yeah, dude, but it's a highly complex issue, right? The socioeconomic factors, the historic context of black communities, the, the disproportionate patrolling of like white policemen in black areas. Obviously, if you patrol 80% in black areas, yeah, you're going to find all the, the black kids that have weed in their pocket and drugs. You will find the same kids in the white neighborhoods. They all have the same drugs in their pocket. But if you don't patrol over there, they're going to slip through the grid, right? So the whole idea of saying, like, black people, bad, oh, high criminal rate, they must be black. You know, another example is, like, blacks are arrested for non-aggravated assaults 2.7 times more than, than white people. And there are countless studies, whether it is this study where I think they did, like, 1 million traffic stops or something, and they, they did the statistics only with traffic stops that happened during the day and with traffic stops during the night. During the night, the ratio between black people being stopped and the ratio between white people being stopped was fairly equal because you can't see the driver. If you're stopping a car, 
the driver, if you drive behind him, is just a shadow, right? It's a black shadow. Could be a white guy. Could be. A... But during the day, all the, the, the traffic stops that happened during the day where you can look into the car and see, oh, that's a black guy, it's a white guy, was disproportionately on black people. So when policemen actually could see it's a black person in the car, a black person driving, that's when they would actually stop the car. You know, it's more likely for them to control the car. Um, so... There are so many aspects that are just so unspeakably dumb in a comment like this. But anyway, let's let's move on to the next one. By just culture, um, you, we've talked. I mean, I'll never forget this line from Gavin a McInnes one day where he's talking about mm -hmm. all these rad femmes being like, they're going to wake up in their ovaries one day. I'll remember the line. He was like, they're going to be like an elephant's graveyard and they're going to be alone yes. and they're going to be like, yeah. what did I do with my life? And, and that's happening. Yeah, that's it's happening. right now you're starting to see some of these women who are like the millennials. There are 40 year old millennials, I think now are getting close to it. And very, very close. Yeah, yeah. I'm a millennial and I'm 37 going on 38. So it's got to be. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, the long view is a cultural thing now where you could look at, for example, Muslims. That is how they view. Oh, no. You see this. I forget what doc I was watching, but they were oh, no. talking to this Muslim guy, and he's like, I don't f he, He's a UK, an immigrant to the UK. He's like, I don't f care. We'll just outbreed them, essentially. Like, I'm just going to yeah. stay here. I'm going to have more kids, and we're going to control more in the future. And knowing that his life was essentially meaningless, that it was just a part of this machine that was going to help his people, mm. people used to think like that. Not, I mean, you know, the West... Now it's it's it got cool to be single. Oh, it got God cool Lord. to be uh, um, you know to not have can kids. I, can I can I read you something that really yeah. reinforces? Okay, so first of all, he's quoting Gavin McGuinness here, right? I think that's his name. He's like the founder of the Proud Boys. He's the guy who interviewed Kanye in this kind of really insane interview where even Gavin McGuinness had to say, "Oh no, I'm distancing myself from the things Kanye says because it was like just." too far out even for that moron but here we have the quartering quoting gavin mcginnis and saying well this thing that he once said really stuck to my mind you know we can see it now already all these 40 year old women all these 40 year old millennials you know they're all alone and they're all sad and it's like yes that exists i'm not saying that is a thing that does not exist you find women in that age that kind of regret that they didn't have kids maybe they're alone maybe they had 20 boyfriends and now they kind of feel so that exists but equally i see a lot of women in this age they're like dude i love to be alone i enjoy it you know don't tell me how to live my life i don't want kids i see all my friends they have kids it's insanity which i can kind of underline you know having kids myself it is insanity to an extent i don't want any of this i want to live alone i want to have a nice life i want to make the money i have and you know one day i'll donate it when i die and that's it that's what I want. So to kind of imply here to say, well, you know, all these women out there, all these millennials that are now 40, they're all depressed and sad and they, they didn't fulfill the ancient Christian idea of how you should live. It's really dumb. Okay. So that's already dumb. That's such a dumb thing to say. Then the next dumb thing is that he obviously goes into the great replacement theory, right? He's like, well, there's... This one example, uh, what was the doc that I watched, this documentary? So clearly he has done no freaking research. He's taking this from an anecdotal example from a documentary he has watched, okay? And in this documentary, there was this one Muslim guy, the immigrant to the UK, and that guy was like, well, essentially, we're just going to outbreed them, right? We're going to outbreed those white... And again, I'm not saying that there's not a single Muslim out there who has ideas like that, you know, and who, who has this... But it's complete nonsense it's the whole great replacement theory is built on a conspiracy theory that just exaggerates demographic change that is happening all the time and then on top of that it's allegedly being engineered right it's engineered by these people who are pulling the strings replacing white people it's like but who who does it well they they are doing this and i'm sure you know people are going to be able to educate me and be like well that's the, this elite or that elite or those are the people who who has it's racist scaremongering that's what it is and to be honest with you it has a freaking long history in the 1870s there were insane amounts of chinese immigrants and we had similar uh, narratives in the united states where everyone's like oh my god so many chinese they're outbreeding the whites this is the end of the white race you know it's it was similar narratives every time this happened in the 1910s it was japanese immigrants in the 1920s it was loads of jewish refugees uh, th that came from europe right and 
there's an ongoing repetition of these narratives of the white race being outbred in history. We've seen it over and over again. And it's just nonsense. It hasn't happened in the past and it's not happening now. Demographic shift always happens, okay? But this orchestrated effort of deleting the white, blue-eyed race from existence is just the biggest nonsense that exists, okay? You gotta be really brain amputated to really believe in this nonsense. And ironically, ironically, looking again at the history, it's mostly white Europeans who have done plenty of replacing throughout history, going to other countries and nations, taking the country over, executing anyone who's not willing to follow their little order, and literally implementing processes of replacement. You know, And now you have those white boys who've been doing this all the way through history, just because they're not aware of the history that they've been part of, crying, because now they're like, well, we're getting replaced. It's absolute nonsense. And then or beyond that, plenty of mass shootings in the recent past have been linked to ex exactly those narratives, okay? To like the great replacement theory. Uh, they've been mentioned in the manifesto, manifesto of the Christchurch shooter, for example, right? Like that dude had it, the, the, the accused shooter in Buffalo. He mentioned it. There, there was a shooting in, in Norway. There was the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh. Uh, there was an El, the, the shooting in El Paso in Texas. All these horrible, horrible shootings where innocent people got slaughtered mentioned the Great Replacement Theory as a reason why we now need to go out and stop anyone who has like not who, who doesn't match, match the color chart of skin color. You know, you can see how people do absolutely awful things based on these lies and conspiracy theories. It's happening in the real world, yet here is this clown defending those same theories. Let's move on to the next one. I mean, black folks really do be liking watermelon and chicken. I mean, why is that a harmful stereotype? Why is it a harm? Let's listen to that again. And while we listen to it, while we listen to it, look at his face. Look at his face expression, how he says it. He's not saying like, I mean, in all fairness, okay, I've personally known quite a few people of color who did really like these dishes, okay? Look at his face. Look at the smirk he's putting on. I mean, black folks really do be liking watermelon and chicken. I mean, why is that a harmful stereotype? There's a reason that Popeye's chicken isn't in the suburbs. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason right <sighs> jesus man i don't even know where to begin on this one it's so f dumb so first of all the whole watermelon thing is a long-standing stereotype a racist anti-black trope originating in the southern united states it first rose as a backlash against african-american emancipation and econ economic uh, sufficiency in the late 1860s after the Civil War in several areas of the South, former slaves grew watermelon on their own land. So, you know, there's a direct link to it as a cash crop to sell. Thus, for African-Americans, watermelons were a symbol of liberation and self-reliance, while many in the majority white culture embodied a loss, right? Of course, it's a loss, right? Now, you have these guys who previously did all my field work for no and when they die they die i don't care because i'm not paying them it's literally like cattle right that's what they're doing and now suddenly they're emancipating themselves and they're growing watermelons excuse me they're not supposed to grow watermelons and make money and become independent so white people experience it as a loss right it's a loss that these people are independent while the watermelon for the black community was a symbol of emancipation but obviously this whole narrative and there's a huge you know, article about it, a Wikipedia article, breaking it down in, in great detail and giving loads of, like, visual references of how this racist trope evolved, it rose to popularity and where it comes from. But obviously, our friend the Quartering is completely oblivious to this context. He doesn't know anything like that. Maybe he knows and he just doesn't care. He's like, well, I mean, they do like chicken and watermelon. <laughs> The way he says it, the disrespect, right? And beyond that, I f***ing love watermelons. I love chicken. Many people do. It's just a racist trope. That's all it is, 
right? But to him, it's just a joke. That's why he says it with this smirk in his, in his face, right? It, it's it's a re really reasonable statement to make. It's, some, it's, it's one of those where you're like, well, I gotta be allowed to say this, right? This is the thing I should be allowed to say, right? But... In, in, all, in all honesty, if you look at it, read it between the lines, his smirk, the way he says it, the way of the tone of voice, it just really reveals his complacency towards respecting black Americans. And it, it illustrates his complete lack of historic context. He clearly, he doesn't know. He doesn't know better. There are two options. Either he doesn't know or he literally is so ignorant, complacent and hateful towards black communities that he ignores knowing it. But again, the statement just really reveals how, like, it reveals indefinitely more about him and his thinking than it does about black people actually eating watermelon and liking chicken. It's ridiculous. Let's move on to the next one. Tough act to follow. Was it, was it liberating or was it super liberating for you to say the N-word? I grew up saying it, so. I wow. I was it liberating to you to say the N-word or was it super liberating? Right? Because let's be honest, I mean, we white folk, right? We own this country and we really shouldn't give in to other people like blacks telling us what we can and can't say, right? We shouldn't be, like, they shouldn't stop us from saying a word. It's just a word. It's freedom of speech, right? I should be, I mean, how liberating was it for you to say, the, to say that word? How liberating was that? I, I knew it. I, knew I didn't it. Can you say it now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, shoot. I should have silenced it there for a second. But she dropped the N-bomb. Oh, God. <laughs> also notice that, like, how, how much fun they have in, that someone says the N-word, especially the quartering, right? His reaction we'll look at in a minute. But look at the, look at the reaction. She just dropped the N-bomb. Look at everyone. <laughs> She's smiling. Everyone's white, right? We're amongst ourselves here. Everyone in this freaking podcast is as white as it gets. <laughs> he's laughing. She's laughing. She's having a blast. He's a bit like, ooh, you know. He's like, yeah, we, it's, this is fine. This is okay. And the quartering, I mean, check out the quartering's reaction separately. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this really speaks for itself, right? It's almost one of those where you don't need to comment. You just leave it standing as it is because it's, you know, it's insane in and of itself. But, I mean, his complete incredible ignorance, the complacency, the lack of respect and the understanding of the, the meaning of this word, the historic context of this word, uh, the uh, lack of awareness of black American history. I mean, I'm sitting here, a freaking white European, and I'm more aware of why you shouldn't say this word and, and why it is not like any other word. You know, it's not like just a slur or whatever. It goes way beyond that in, in its meaning and in its purpose. But he's just completely oblivious to it. What I find interesting is like he's so desperate. It seems like he's so, everyone there is like so desperate to use the N-word. So again, like I said at the beginning, like they don't have to show this ridiculous amount of respect to a group of people that were literally enslaved, that were like auctioned off by white people and treat, treated like cattle. They had no rights. They had no education. All this is embodied in this word. But let's be honest. I shouldn't be stopped from saying this word. You know, me as a white boy, I should absolutely, and, and I'm happy the other person in this podcast said the word, right? Because it's about time that we move beyond this censorship of us white people being forbidden to say certain words. It's almost like he feels mistreated that he's forbidden to say this word, that it's not okay for him to say this word. You know, he wants to break out of it. He's so desperate to, to be able to normalize that word, to say it. I'm just reading into his behavior here, right? He doesn't say this specifically, but the way he says it in the beginning, right? Where he's like... Was it, was it liberating or was it super liberating for you to say the N-word? You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that it, it wouldn't be liberating and that it even would feel a bit bad if you say that word and, like, disrespectful towards certain people. No, no, no. It's either liberating or super liberating. Those are the two options we have coming from this. Um, and, again, it's one of those examples. I feel, and there's another example I think that we're getting to next where he's trying so desperately to not be 
obviously racist, okay? He's not coming out and he's raising the arm and scr screaming, hail this and hail that. He's not doing, not doing that. Let's look at the next example because I think that really plays into it. This guy, and this is just, again, allegedly, this is me reading into him, but this guy is deeply racist in his heart, but he is smart enough, and he's already not very smart, okay, because he reveals so much about himself by just reading between the lines, but he's smart enough to just not just come out, uh, you know, like, I don't know, like Nick Fuentes and scream the most racist tropes into the air. No, he wants to be, he wants to sound differentiated. He wants to sound smarter than he actually is. Okay, here's the next example illustrating that really well, that he's kind of dancing around it. He's saying it through his teeth. He's, he's not super obvious about it. So check this next example out. Um, yeah. Hypothesis. Remember when I told you all that WrestleMania would play in select theaters? Well, it's been allowed that all future pay-per-views will play Dave and Busters. Oh, dank. I'm so sorry, dude. Dave and Busters. <laughs> those man. I do. Yeah, it's so Dave and Buster's. For those who don't know, is an is a is a, a restaurant chain. Okay, and it's like a comp as far as I'm aware, I've never been. I think there's one in London. I don't know if it's still open, whatever. But it's a chain of restaurants that has like an arcade attached to it. Okay, so it's like an experience type of restaurant. That's how I read it, at least when I looked into it. I I don't um the one that's close to me has um how do I say this? Hmm, how do I say this? Yeah, without being racist. It's um... become <laughs> it's it, oh, it, it's on a it's on a part of town. That you old. know, it's on a part of town where uh, culture is slightly... Do you see how he's dancing around the thing? Check what he says instead. And also how uh, the other people in this podcast react and try to read this chat on screen here. Maybe I can make this a bit bigger. Just, yeah, I'll make it a bit bigger because the image is, is pointless. But read the chat, okay? Read the chat and how people react to, to his statements. Oh. You know, go on. No, come on, go Jeremy. On. Just, just take, take, take the hood out of your mouth and, <laughs> and and say what you're trying to say, Jeremy. It's, it's not. I mean, look, the crowd was always like diverse there. Diverse, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But now it's fine, it's like, which is fine, guys. A diverse crowd, that's fine. Just want to make this clear. This is fine. Diverse there, just fine. But now it's like trash. It's like yeah. Too diverse. Oh my god. It's too <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I'm not, I, No, I'm saying Jeremy. like the crowd it's in the big city so there's always lots of types of people there which are all were which were always good. But yeah, now it's all now BLA dot 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 question mark a urban a very urban crowd. N N, right? The the chat is starting to to fall into place, right? Because we all we all agreeing here. We're not saying it. We're not saying it out loud, but everyone's agreement. Keep reading that chat. Now it's all ghetto and trash. It's all ghetto and trash. Oh it's, not our, it's not our strength anymore. <laughs> I, was, I was literally just... <laughs> we were, now, I'm expecting you to go... Planet of the Apes. Too many Jews. It's gotten darker. Okay? It's full of uh, people that... <sighs> Like rap, like I thought you, I thought it's all you were going to go like Puerto Rican. -y. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought you were going to go like, you know, like an anti a wine mix or trying to be polite type shit, and then you just go full in trash. It's well, oh no, no, no! Oh look, someone says like Jeremy equals racist based. Next comment based, right? Their audience, man, sure, there's the occasional common sense guy here like this one who's like, bro, maybe he comes from one of the other podcasters because clearly it's a group of people. Maybe he comes from another podcast who's maybe a little bit more left-leaning and he just is exposed to the quartering for the first time. So he's like, Jesus Christ, man, what the fuck are you saying? But most people, you know, they're in agreement. They're like, yeah, well, finally someone's saying it out loud, you know, it's, it's gotten very dark. In that Dave and Buster's. No, no, worst, let me be the worst. No, 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 no. Let me be very clear. Hey, let me be no, very no, clear. No, no, Jeremy, we know exactly what you mean. No, 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 no. We know what you meant, no, Jeremy. We know what you meant. Undesirables. When I say trash, KKK quartering. That's like the 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 white 
trash is worse. Oh, ah, right. Oh, the white trash. I just want to make sure the white trash is worse. Just want to make this because that's what I meant all along, right? Wait, it was white trash. That's no, what no, you meant. it's very diverse it's trash, it. is what I'm saying. It's very, it's very diverse trash. Yeah. Santo in, the, Santo in the chat says KKK watering. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no Jews there. The uh, you think Jews would play arcade games? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, Jeremy. I, I know for a fact that if you interact with any blue tech verified on, look at the comments. Look at the freaking comments, man. Twitter, you look them up on Wikipedia and check the early life section. I know you do it. I know you do it, Jeremy. What that? What's that mean? Oh, early life. Yeah, the what early life mean? section. Oh, it's a waste yeah, of jokes. You know, I don't know what that means. You're a f dick. You know exactly <laughs> what it. Means. I don't know what. It, I don't go on Wikipedia. What's under early life? No, nothing, Jeremy. Just never mind. <laughs> right. So you're dancing around these kind of racist tropes, right? And everything is just a joke. It's like this is this is blatant racism, and it doesn't help that he's like, well, I'm uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, white trash. Actually, that's what I meant all along. White trash. That was. It's like, no, no, dude. To you, it's just a joke. Okay. Mm. The whole gang there is like, well, <laughs> well, come on, just say it. Just say it, and the chat is going off, right? N word, N word. It's like, yeah, we all, we all know, we are amongst ourselves here, right? Okay, so just, just say it, just say it out loud. It's no big deal. So this kind of blatant racism, okay, is just something to laugh about, something that you should be a little bit like careful about how you say it. Not that you shouldn't have that opinion. That opinion is perfectly fine, but we need to at least look at how we talk about it. Right? We need to be a little bit aware of how we say it so that we can't be exposed as blatant racists afterwards. That's kind of the main thing, right? He's he's trying so hard to not come across uh, as what everyone accuses him of. He doesn't want to be the, oh, you're the racist, white supremacist guy. He doesn't want to be that guy. So he dances around it. And he's trying so hard to dance around it. But even the other guys in the podcast are like, come on, Jeremy, just say it. We know we know exactly what you mean. I mean, he even said it, right? He's like, we know exactly what you mean, buddy. Okay? We know where you're coming from. So just say it. Okay? I mean, stuff like this, you don't even need to be like a particularly bright bulb to read between the lines in a conversation like that, right? And to realize how bigoted and how racist it actually is and how just because they try a little bit to come across as less racist, it's full on BS. It's full on. And in my mind, it doesn't get much clearer than that, okay? So, yeah, let's keep going. Like, the... the dances that people will do to try and twist the shit that you say and to oh, it happens to me all the it, time yeah remember yeah, the, it, and there yeah. we have it hitler's bad and i said and there we have it has somehow morphed into me defending hitler and i've lost yeah. i've lost that narrative like i lose that's that is now the truth <laughs> that, yeah. that i was literally <laughs> defending hitler well, to be honest, it's not the only tweet we looked at a tweet in the beginning where right where someone is like oh he's defending hitler and he's like well oh yikes there we've got it. It's like, it's like, yeah, dude. There are no two ways of interpreting this. Like, you know, it's it's pretty clear what you're trying to say. You don't need to say something so stupid and then try to twist it afterwards and be like, well, that's just a, a wrong narrative, and I have lost that narrative now. You know, that's haunting me. It's like, dude, no, you said something incredibly dumb and offensive. At least be honest. You know, it's like there are no two sides about this. You defended Hitler. That's disgusting. I know. Me. I'm deeply ashamed. I definitely wasn't making fun of yet another ho ho hollow Hollywood virtue signal that said Hitler man bad. Yeah, I was actually def yeah a moment of quietness there. Everyone's like, oh Jesus Christ, where can we go from here, right? Defending well, him, he's actually done some good things, you know. Did you know he was nominated Europe, for a Nobel happened. Peace Prize? Did you know he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize? I mean, sure, okay. I mean, he also like, you know, tried to exterminate the whole race of Jews and and doing that in an industrial way, right? Where you just put gas chambers up and 100 people in, gas them out, next 100 people in, gas them out, next 100 people in. Like, just like an in industry, like a machine, trying to murder people on an industrial uh, a manner, right? But he also did good things. You know, did you know he had a Nobel Peace Prize? He was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize or he got it or something? Did you know that? Like, bro, again, like, he's trying so hard to not reveal his true 
intention, his true ideas. But he's doing such a terrible job at it, man. You don't even need to be like half bright to read between the lines. But the truth is, that's what his audience wants. People come to his channel to get their little racist and bigoted and anti-trans narratives confirmed. You can't expect the Quatching to come out and be really upfront about it and say, you know, the things that he thinks without any filter. No, he's going to package them into little things, you know, like they do here. You know, at some point it suddenly shifts where someone says, what? With a sarcastic voice. You've defended Hitler? And he's like, oh yeah, no, I'm so... It's just a joke. It's just a joke to these people. You defended Hitler? That's disgusting. I know, me. I'm deeply ashamed. That's disgusting. You know, when you say it with that tone of voice, you're clearly implying that it's not disgusting. It's not a disgusting thing to defend Hitler. It's fine. You know, the way he said, this guy, whoever that is, said that. And then Jeremy's response, you know, is pretty clear where he's standing on it as well. certainly wasn't making fun of yet another ho ho hollow Hollywood virtue signal that said, Hitler man bad. Yeah, I was actually defending well, him. He's actually done some good things, you know. Did you know he was nominated for a Nobel Hitler. Peace Prize? The more I hear about this Hitler fella, the less I like him. Yeah, I know. Me too. He's a, he's a, he sounds like a wrongin. I don't know he if you guys are history buffs, but... Uh... <laughs> no, I don't know if you're a history buff, but I <laughs> fucking love Norm. He was at least I pretty good. At, he, he, was, he was good economically. Do you know how much the Holocaust? Ah! Uh, uh, a Holocaust joke. There we go. Did you know how much the Holocaust cost? And this whole narrative about this. So let me let me talk about this for a second, you know, as a German. Because when Hitler came into power, and my grandma told me this firsthand, okay, Germany was in a bad place, right? There was high inflation, there was poverty, there was uh, unemployment, people were struggling, people didn't have enough to eat. Germany was in a bad place. Hitler came into power and things got better. And everyone's like, holy shit, he's doing great. You know, he's had all these youth programs he did and like he, people had suddenly had work and people could take over shops and everything started to get better. And it's like, well, Hitler's doing a great job. Well, hold on a second. Why what the, was that happening? Well, if you go through your town and every Jewish-owned business gets emptied out, suddenly you have a lot of retail space available, right? We've transported all the Jews off. Look, six empty retail shops now in this village. Do you not want to open a bakery, a nice and white and German bakery? Or do you want to open a nice and white German bookshop? you know, or like Hitler memorabilia shop or whatever you want to open. <laughs> so there was work. On top of that, obviously, he was starting to prepare for the war. Okay, so he started, he kickstarted all these massive factories that started to manufacture weapons, started to manufacture tanks, submarines, everything. These bunkers at some point, you know, to some extent, they're still standing today. That stuff is still around. So he kickstarted the war manufacturing process, which obviously gave a lot of people work. But at what cost? On one hand, you're working towards a fucking world war. On the other hand, you've just transported off all uh, Jewish people from your village. So now you have a lot of retail space. It's like you can hardly say even the, the situation for those that benefit from the scheme has probably improved. You can hardly say that those were some good things he did. It's like, yeah, that's not how it works. Sure, I can go to freaking London and shoot every black business owner in the head. And now suddenly we've got pretty much you know, loads of new businesses that can open up. And, and lots of white people have great opportunities to start new businesses. It's like, we're doing a great thing here. It's like, yeah, no, you actually don't. Actually, you did a freaking awful thing. But these kinds of people, they don't want to see it that way, right? They're like, well, did you know he did some good thing? He built the autobahns. Which, by the way, is also a myth, right? That that was like a liberal scheme that started before Hitler even came into power and he just adopted it. But that's a different story. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> around six yeah. million bucks. And the, yeah. and the, tra the oh, trains were always on. How much did the Holocaust? About six million bucks was his answer. Okay. Okay. Time. <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 We're going down just a the dark, dark you, road here. Amazing. This is so see, funny. See just man. the way you said that. I remember this fucking oh, like, this is hilarious. That someone wrote ages ago because someone called the Holocaust the Hall of Cost because they were just <laughs> oh, being a fucking idiot and everyone was amazing. laughing at them going, ha, ha. You know how these Jews, they were stuck in gas chambers, defecating themselves out of fear of death. Children, young children, scratch marks in tile walls. I've told this story in another live stream before. Hilarious. <laughs> Six million bucks. How much did the holo cost? You know, children fearing for their death in gas chambers, man. It's a, it's an incredible, it's such a funny podcast, whatever that podcast is. Ah, uh, hall of cost. Like, this guy's a f 
an idiot he thinks it's called the hall of cost and someone replied going to be fair that sounds just as scary for a jew <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious this is just do you know what i mean like the level of disturbedness that you see in this type of content it's never up front it's never in your face where they're like you know what hitler did great things I don't care about Jewish people. In fact, I hate all people of all other ethnicities. It's not that type of... That was the racist that racism that the Nazis literally had. That was the racism they stood up for. And they were literally like... like I mean, Hitler wrote a book in which he said, we have to exterminate all Jews. Now the racism is this. What you just saw. It's more subtle. It's more read between the lines. It's a joke. How much did the Holocaust? Oh, six million bucks. It's packaged in a nice, digestible, friendly, ha ha ha, there's just a joke happening thing. But it's the same thing. It's the freaking same thing. The problem is, so many people are too dumb to read between the freaking lines to even understand what is being said in a podcast like that. They are historically oblivious they have no idea what was going on i mean especially in the united states many americans have no idea what the these these concentration camps actually were and how they looked and all that it's not part of the key education it was part of my key education so i went there i visited them it's 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 unspeakable and to hear people make jokes about this stuff in this manner bro it's just a different, it's a completely different level. Wesley Thompson says the U.S. are cleansing the indigenous population and replacing them with their own. Exactly. Great example. Like speaking of the great replacement theory, all the poor whites are getting replaced in the United States where they literally came and replaced an existing brown colored race. You know, like the hypocrisy, the lack of understanding, the lack of empathy, the lack of so many things. It's so hard to fathom for someone with like a normal brain. Like it's unbelievable. All right, let's look at the next one. And we have Tolarian Community College publicly posting, uh, jumping on the dog pile saying, I was afraid. No, he said, uh, no one has made me more miserable than that man. He has spread more vile lies and attacks. I've lost sleep, had panic attacks. Despite an un, the unending harassment and attacks from MTG HQ, I was always afraid to speak up, but no longer. It is like literally the definition of crying out in pain as you strike me. You are saying... I don't know if you're aware of that quote. I, I hope that the, I haven't watched this clip, but I hope that this guy is going into the meaning of that quote in the context. Sticking a hate mob on me, you know that's what you're doing, and you're trying to play the victim while doing it. It is like literally the definition of crying out in pain as you strike me. Right. No, exactly. You so. know, the funny thing is. It's like there's that saying. The original saying is something I'm uncomfortable repeating, but it goes along along the lines of something is like, "They will cry out as they strike you," and that's kind of the theme of these videos. So be aware, the guy who just spoke there, the end, yeah, that's him as well. That is also the quartering. That is like a thumbnail of his old, I think, Twitter account. I don't know if he ever used this on YouTube or whatever, but that is his voice. So he is saying he's uncomfortable of repeating the original quote, right? That's what he's saying. And that means he's well aware of what this quote means and where it stems from. You know, the funny thing is... It's like there's that saying, the original saying is something I'm uncomfortable repeating. I'm uncomfortable but... repeating. Why are you uncomfortable repeating it? You kind of just repeated it, buddy. You just did that. It goes song along the lines of something is like, they will cry out as they strike you. And that's kind of the theme of these videos. So, yeah, he's Googling it. Cries out in pain. The Jew cries out in pain as he as he strikes them. Okay, so it's like again an old. Here we go. Do we get like a little bit more of a break? An old Polish proverb goes: "The Jew cries out in pain as it strikes you." Fascists have always been fond of projection, so it's an old racist trope, and the fact that the quartering in this video says, "Well, I'm kind of uncomfortable repeating it." 
Why would he be uncomfortable? If he doesn't know this quote, if he just read it somewhere out of context, you know, uh, whatever, he cries out in pain as he strikes you. That's like a common quote. And he's unco he's like, I read this somewhere without the Jew part. But the fact that he says, I'm uncomfortable repeating it, tells me he knows exactly what it means. And he knows exactly what he is referencing there. Uh, you know, as he makes that claim, and he's using it really freely in this first segment. Also, I don't know. I don't know the context of this video. Okay, obviously, I don't know who exactly he's talking about, but also how he makes fun of someone's claiming. You know that he got doxxed and harassed and threatened and stuff. He's saying it with like he got doxxed and harassed. I like guess as, as if it's a joke. Again, to him, it's just a joke. His tone of voice is so revealing, and he is clearly too dumb to hide his his deepest inner thoughts and package them in a nice diplomatic way so that not everyone is like, dude, you're just a freaking racist. And then he uses this specific quote. It is like literally the definition of crying out in pain as you strike me. And I'm convinced that people like that, again, this is just me interpreting stuff, right? This is no evidence or whatever, but I'm convinced that people like that drip feed these kinds of quotes to their followers because he knows that's why his followers are coming to him. That's why the people join his live streams because they want to hear those subtle little racist quotes, those subtle little hints towards being like transphobic and like screw trans people and they should all be in camps. We're not going to say it directly. These things are the highlights for these people in his live stream. Okay, so they come there to feed. And that's why he says it. He's well aware of what it means. He's well aware of the context of it linking back to Jewish culture, you know, and being like a, a highly discriminatory statement that goes way back in history and gives context, um, you know, to, uh, to to Jewish within Jewish hate, basically. Well aware of it, but he's feeding it to his followers because that's what they want. That's what they want. They want to hear that. Shit. And that's how he makes his money. Okay, so he's like a grifter. But with this particular man, anyway, let's talk about in the end, like to what extent I think he believes all this on it. That's kind of coming in the end. Uh, yeah, here's the next clip. Let's take a look. Let's go. Roth is Jewish. Why is that important? He's married to a Broadway producer, also <laughs> Jewish. So you're saying two Jewish billionaires <laughs> had a son who is in theater and produces uh, propaganda films. Wait. Whoa. To push an ideology. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know what that means. I'm just whoa. reporting the facts here. <laughs> whoa, whoa! You're saying the quiet part out loud, bro. You're not supposed to say this on this podcast. I mean, we all thinking it, but whoa, whoa, bro! Don't say these things out loud, man. What are you doing, eh? Jeez. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's pretty clear to me where Jordan Roth gets his funding to own an entire oh. theater group. Oh, and he's Jewish and he's rich, you know, and so, you know, that's, you know. As well as put out highly produced propaganda films. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm happy you exist, Jordan Roth, and I really look forward to your next episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I think these guys are reacting to him, right? I thought he's in the podcast with those guys, but it looks like now that this South Park thing is playing, I don't know, they're just reacting to Man him. Man has a very big penis. Ah. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to be notified the next time I upload a video, make sure you subscribe, support the cause. And lol, ratio plus your Jewish. Dude, massive own at the end, lol, ratio plus your Jewish. I mean, at this point, looking at this kind of content, it is so dumb, it is so unreflected, it is so uninformed and just blatantly wrong. And you can see it in the reaction of those guys as well, right? They're like, yeah, bro, it's like, it's completely ridiculous. You can, you can see it in his chat that he's catering that stuff directly to his audience and that they just eat it up, okay? His audience loves this stuff. They don't want like a stream where someone is like, well, bro, actually, Let's talk about the Great Replacement Theory, and here's a study, and here's an example, and here's a historic context. Actually, if it, they don't want that. They want something like the quartering to confirm their dumped down, simplified conspiracy theories that even a moron with a two-digit IQ can understand. Okay, That's why they come there. That's why they participate in this. You, earlier, I think we saw it in the in the in the comments in the stream. Like it was pretty pretty clear that that's what they're talking about. But 
Yeah, I mean, at this point, this stuff is so stupid. Like, it, it just descends into stupidity bit by bit. Um, but I think there's like one or two more. Let me see what we have here. I received so many comments about Nazis and the Holocaust and my being one and what I'm doing. And, you know, most of my family <laughs> died in concentration camps. So dude up here is a is a Jewish person. I think he's kind of venting about his experience with, with Jewish hate and all that, if I don't misunderstand. Now, most of my family <laughs> died in concentration camps. Did you just evoke concentration camps to strengthen your video about mean tweets what no i don't want to do that joke dankula no i don't want to teach you to do my cat to do that no right i don't want my cat to know how to do that so there you go uh the quarterings friend count dankula currently host of a weekly podcast together so they are Big, big buddies, okay? YouTube user fined for posting video of pet dog giving Nazi salutes. So I don't want to teach my cat to do that. No, why would I Why would I do that? So here's a Jewish person venting about their stories about the Third Reich and like kind of reminiscing probably, I don't know the context of the video, but like reminiscing about his, you know, what would have happened to his family in the Third Reich. You know, obviously you're Jewish, you're going to be... You're going to be transported straight to a concentration camp. Nobody's going to give a shit of you. But he's like, no, I don't want to teach my cat how to do a Nazi salute. Count Dankula, dude that I do a, a podcast with. Why would I do that? Okay. And like down here is a little bit more context. I don't know if you can read this. I mean, feel free to read it yourself. I'm going to read this out uh, for obvious reasons. But Jesus Christ, man. I don't want to do. All right, fine. Hold on. Looks like we're going to have to roast the professor. Yeah! Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, we have to roast the professor who's Jewish and... Right. Okay, and then we're getting actually a little bit of an extra. I don't know if, if to what extent we can kind of take that serious. Like, you have to roast the professor to cook by exposing dry heat as in an oven. So, I look, I think the, the quartering is even too dumb to understand that complexity you know he doesn't say we have to roast the professor because he's actually making like a roast juice in the oven kind of a uh, reference i think he's too dumb for that that's just a coincidence so at some point you know obviously these people that participate in this kind of stuff and and expose him for what he does they may go a bit too far here and there as well where they're like well he clearly was referencing an oven so it's like, yeah no maybe maybe he didn't <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. It's not easy to go through the stuff because it's so dumb, but here we go. Uh, so I think that was this one. Um, and then I think we have the last one. This is the very last one where he's diving, diving a little bit more into the anti-LGBTQ thing, right? Make it very clear that you can't just be negative towards other cultures. You also have to be transphobic. That's part of the deal, okay? So he, he kind of ticks that box right here. Um, staff knew she was trans and we talked to her parents last night about what me coming in uh and they'd given it the go ahead and uh parents should be parents should lose uh custody <sighs> so here he is saying that parents who give their child the opportunity to explore their gender identity maybe you have a child who is like well mom you know what i prefer to wear clothes of a girl and i'm a boy and you know, I want to explore this. And they're like, you know, yeah, let's let's look into that. If you want to wear girls' clothes, wear girls' clothes. We will support you in that. And this, and he's like, well, they should lose custody, right? We should They should lose custody of all that kind of stuff. Also, keep in mind, like, what he's talking about here is a lips of TikTok tweet, okay? Needless to say that lips of TikTok is a far-right anti-LGBTQ Twitter account, okay? He also keeps re-uploading on his channel 
those videos from lips of TikTok, kind of putting his own name to that type of content, that, that super hardcore anti-LGBTQ. So he's clearly also follow, following, like following into that kind of gap. Again, I spoke about it before. We, we've seen like the similar hate towards gay people a long time ago. And now, now there's a similar, it's, it's, it's a very repetitive pattern. Now we're hating towards trans people because conservatives and, and people who are anti-progressive, they don't understand that certain things just exist. Okay, some people are just born in a body that they don't feel comfortable with. Some people are just born not being into this, the other gender. It's, it's just what it is. It's just a reality. But they struggle to understand it. They have to overcomplicate it. You know, they have to judge people uh, who support young teenagers and stuff in exploring their identity. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying... If there's a 15-year-old girl and she wants to be a boy, you know, let's let's immediately go for like a sex change surgery. But the truth is, despite people like Matt Walsh and they're claiming that that's happening all the time, that doesn't happen. That stuff happens, if not at all, like not at all, or like on such a marginal scale that it's absolutely ridiculous to even mention it. But these kind of people like to amplify it and these kind of people are like, oh, what, you show tolerance towards a child that may feel more like a boy, even if it's born as a girl? You, you should lose custody. That's how far he's going. It's an old classic Nazi trope, right? Just now it's transphobic. Like it's just trans people who are under attack, right? It's changed from, oh, you're a Jew sympathizer. Oh, you're a gay sympathizer. Now you're that sympathizer. Now you're a trans sympathizer. You should lose custody. And let's be honest, you know, you should also kind of put it, be put into a camp, right? Because that's where you belong with ideas like this. So, he, I mean, to keep in mind what he's saying here, he's saying they should remove a child forcefully from his natural parents separating a family because he doesn't agree with the decision that this family made that this child made that that probably they made with their doctor their practitioner and all that they made a decision internally he has he doesn't even know this family this family has no personal context to this guy yet again he's imposing his sh uh, ideals and hate on these people is like these people should lose custody we should actually rip that child out of this family even they might be happy as a family with their decisions no we should rip them out and we should take them apart because i disagree with their decisions like the level of insanity of that do you know what i mean like it's so deranged it is so disconnected from reality and common sense they're gonna claim that trans people are sick Right? And that like adults giving their children an opportunity to explore their gender and look into that early on, you know, so hopefully they can kind of get contempt with their own identity when they get older. That's a sickness. That's what these people will claim. But the truth is imposing your own horrible, hateful ideology on those people like he just did in kind of a playful, oh, it's all just a joke kind of manner how he always does. That is an actual sickness. And I guess like we kind of touched on it before, like I guess the question really is from all this, to what extent is he really convinced and on board with all this racism, with all the transphobia, with the bigoted opinions that we just looked through? Or is he really just catering to his fans? Because we see this all the time, right? You have people who did all kinds of content beforehand. And then suddenly they, they kind of tap into the right wing niche and they're like, oh, you know what? Let me tap. Let me cater to anti-Jewish hate. Let me cater to anti-climate change. Let me cater to anti-Muslimic rhetoric, whatever. You're catering now to all these kinds of racist or, or like right wing narratives. And suddenly your clicks triple and you're like, holy shit, bro. Last month I earned 3000 pounds. Now I'm earning 10,000 pounds every month. I'm going to keep doubling down on these freaking right-wing moral narratives, not because I believe it, but because that shit earns me tons of money. So does he actually believe this shit? Does someone like the quartering actually believe those racist, transphobic, bigoted narratives he puts out? I personally think he does. And I tell you why. He's a grifter. No doubt that he's a grifter. Okay, He's clearly amplifying this stuff and throwing his, his uh, audience little racist bits that then they eat up and come back to him because he's the guy who throws them the racist bits. Okay, He definitely does that. But the point is, he is rather articulate, but he is not a very bright person. He seems to lack a certain diplomatic skill that you would need. If you're a racist 
okay? Like, for example, maybe someone, and I'm not saying that's a racist, or but, but someone like Jordan Peterson, okay? He's elaborate enough in his articulation to hide his, his bigoted ideas behind a wall of fancy speech that sounds like, oh, he's saying something that's actually justified and fine. The quartering is not able to do that. He's not articulate and bright enough to really do that. You can see, and we watched it in some of the, the clips that we looked at now, him dancing around some of the things and, and just trying to not say, well, I don't like black people or whatever his thing is, right? He doesn't go that far. He tries to be diplomatic diplomatic about it, but he fails at it because he's a, he's a dumb idiot, okay, who just struggles to package his racist views into something that's not obviously racist. And because he's too dumb to do that, I conclude for my for me personally that he's also to dump to just create this persona the quartering even he actually has common sense even he knows how wrong it is to laugh about the holocaust even how he knows how messed up it is to make fun of black people in the way he did in some of those clips right He's doing it because it's his gut feeling. It's just coming out, okay? And he's talking about it in that way because that's the honest truth. And he's he, he knows it's an unpopular truth, so he's trying to hide it to the best of his uh, limited intellectual abilities. But if you just read barely between the lines, I think it's pretty clear that this guy does represent from his heart the things that he says. And that's why when he says these bigoted, when he says these racist things, there is a tone of authenticity and, and credibility because he does believe it that swings with the way he says it. And that's why these people come back. You know, that's why he has massive followers and loads of people who I'm sure are going to, if I turn this into a video, are going to dislike this video into oblivion and tell me how I have no idea. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for their comments. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the quartering segment. Okay, that was kind of the main segment of today's stream. I don't know how long I rambled on now. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to read a few comments now and, and see what you guys have to say. 